people kept saying to me, like, do you want to be like a big fish in a little pond and go to like a smaller school? Or you want to be a little fish in a big pond and go to Indiana trying to like shine me away from it? And, and I was like, no, like I want to be a big fish in a big pond. Chandra Davidson, welcome to the 141st episode of the Athletes Podcast, where we get to chat about your story, all of the insights, knowledge, and wisdom that you've gained over the past couple of decades in the sport of soccer. Maybe just start off by sharing who you are and how you've come to be this incredible athlete. I'm Chandra Davidson. I play for Sporting Club de Portugal in Portugal, and this is my second year here. Before that, I played for the Indiana Hoosiers in America and playing football. And yeah, it's great. You uh, have the fortunate ability to play the sport that you love professionally. Growing up in Stony Creek from Bishop Ryan High School, maybe explain what it was like growing up in Southern Ontario, where we're currently located now recording and comparing it to Portugal now. Yeah, I definitely think... It all started back at Bishop Bryan. It's very different being in Portugal compared to back home. I think that I definitely went from three different spots from being in Canada, then to America, then straight to Portugal again. But it's just been a journey for sure. I feel like as the years go on, I keep getting better and better. So definitely doing something I love and I'll keep doing it until <laughs> until I don't love it anymore, which will probably be a while longer. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Was it always the dream to become a professional footballer from day one growing up in Stony Creek? Was that the be all end all or were you playing any other sports growing up and think you were going to make it to that top level? Um, I played a lot of sports when I was younger. I played volleyball, basketball, all those. Um, I think I really focused in on soccer when I was in high school, grade 10, grade 11. And then really my only goal was to go to university. I didn't really think about the professional world until mm. honestly my last year of university was where I was like, oh, like, I, I'm good at this. Like I, I obviously knew I was good, but I, like I was like, I could take this to the next level. And yeah, and that's when some doors opened for me. Unfortunately, it was COVID when I graduated. So I had a tryout with a NWSL team in Chicago and then COVID happened. It kind of went south, but then the Portugal option opened up, which was really scary to me, but also something I had to do. So yeah, but I, I love it. And it was the best decision I've made to come here and um, play at sporting. I'm I'm interested in the point that you brought up about it being something you, you had to do. Can you maybe explain on what you mean by that? Like my last year of college, I just, I wasn't done yet. Like I, I had right. so much, potential. I felt like I kept getting better and better every year. And I really, I just wasn't ready to stop. A lot of my friends were thinking about what career path to go down, what schools to sign up for. And that just didn't, it didn't really interest me as much. I'm like, I have so much more to give to the sport and I love traveling. And it just, when the European option opened up, I was like, I have to take this. Uh, yeah. I, it seems like a dream for a lot of Canadian athletes to be able to have the opportunity to continue pro sport overseas. What was that experience like for you, obviously growing up, having to then transition down below the 49th parallel, go to the university of Indiana, played four years there, played in every game it seemed like you possibly could started all 19 games as a captain in your senior year 2019 didn't look like you missed a beat all from 2016 to 2019 playing almost every game is that correct yeah um I think I got really lucky with injuries and stuff and um I definitely played through some things but like the medical care and everything there was unreal so um they made sure we did all our pool workouts and all our like the recovery was taken care of. So it enabled me just to play in all the games I could and um, help the team that way. But yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about University of Indiana as a Hoosier. What was the experience? Any insights, stories you want to share from on the pitch, maybe off the pitch from the first couple of years of university? I was definitely really scared to go at first, just to like leave the nest kind of thing. I'm very... It might not seem like it, but I'm a very homebody. Like I love being with my family, love being home, even though I haven't been there in so long. So it was difficult for me to go. I think I was like pulled in the car crying while I had to go away from my parents and stuff. But I settled in really well. I met some of the best people that I have in my life there. <clears throat> the soccer was 
it went through ups and downs, winning and losing and everything, but it really was like a great experience and it was some of the best years of my life. So I wouldn't take it back, but yeah, it was just a really great experience there. Were there other schools that you were looking at attending or that you maybe dreamed of attending growing up or through high school days that you wanted to go to once you hit that NCAA level? Yeah, it was really a crazy process. And um, I know like Phoenix played with me on the Burlington Bayhawks, like, and then yeah. uh, you go to showcases and stuff and you're just a kid and, and all these coaches are there and you receive an email and then you go see the school and it, it happens really fast. There were a few universities interested and um, I went on a few official visits. Uh, Indiana by far was like the biggest school and like the most like pride in their sports and just being there was like unreal. It As soon as I went there, I was like, I want to go here. Um, people kept saying to me, like, do you want to be like a big fish in a little pond and go to like a smaller school or you want to be a little fish in a big pond and go to Indiana trying to like shine me away from it and, and I was like no like I want to be a big fish in a big pond like I want to go to Indiana and I want to make a name for myself and and everything and and so that's kind of how I ended up picking that and another teammate of mine went there as well so we had each other and that that helps whenever you have someone you can go and play it with you know makes that transition leaving the nest a little bit easier, right? Uh, you, you talked about the fact that their athletic care was incredible at Indiana. Your degree was in exercise science. Is that what got you interested in it further? Yeah, so I graduated with a kinesiology exercise science degree. Definitely now I'm looking into more like the sports psychology side of things, taking a few years off from school um, just makes you like explore other options and what your interests are. But yeah. And, and the medical care system there is it, it was just great. I can't compare it to anything else. We got really lucky with the athletic trainer we had and it, and it really just depends on the person that you get to take care of your team. So yeah, it helped me a lot, as you said, like playing all the games and everything. So yeah, it looks like you've had a decent career. I mean, start, starting or playing in basically every game, to like I said, between 2016 to 2019. Uh, Three-time MVP with Burlington, leading team to a national championship, captain in your fourth year at Indiana. It seems like you got some leadership qualities, Chandra. I'm curious, like anything in particular that you aim to do or work towards as a leader on the team, trying to make sure that your efforts and maybe your insights are shared with the entire team? Yeah, I think, I think I've always taken on a bit of that leadership goal. And um, sometimes it takes me a little bit to get like started and settled. And then it always comes out at some point, like your characteristics and, and how you are on, especially on the field. I feel like I'm a really good leader um, coming here. I, it's different because you're playing with some, I think the oldest girl on our team is 35. So okay. like you're playing with who have all this experience and stuff but that's still I feel like my leadership qualities come out and we all balance each other out and, and it's a really nice mix absolutely I, I mean it's interesting I, I always like to bring up like leadership leading by example and then also like the extracurricular or kind of intangible leadership qualities that people have and I think you probably possess a bit of both I think you're being humble here and saying that you it just comes out occasionally but um how, how do you make sure that you as a younger individual coming onto a team aren't like pushing those maybe more wise individuals away and sh like scaring them off because you're this young energetic person coming in with leadership qualities? Um, it's definitely very competitive, like wherever you go when you're playing professionally. Yeah. Uh, but I think that once I start playing, there's like a level of respect for just the player who like, I just, I never give up. Like I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. And not a lot of, not all players are like that. And I think that that gives me a lot of credit and respect from my coaches and my teammates. Um, even if I'm not having the best game, like, you know, I won't stop running until the whistle blows. It's just something I do. So I feel like every team that I've gone to, every experience I've had, I've gained that respect and then it's just forms me into the leadership role and everything where does that come from i don't know <laughs> i think uh 
I don't know. I, I've grown up in an environment where like my family and everything has really taught me to bring out leadership roles and everything, but I really don't know. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Phoenix mentioned you always had one of the best work ethics and like you mentioned, you never give up. Does that stem from anywhere that you can think of parents? Is there something that motivates you to be like that? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I'm thinking when you say like, what brings up the leadership role? I wish I could say like, oh, I'm like the oldest child or something, but no, like I'm the youngest child of like by like 10 years. So I think it's just something that, that comes out on the field. Like I, I want my team to win. I really want, I, I really care about people too. And, and I mm. set by example on and off the field by just caring about the individuals, wanting to hear what they have to say, um, their opinions, a lot of players like, Sometimes egos can come into play and I feel like I'm very level-headed and humble in that sense. But yeah, the work ethic, I think I always feel like I'm a bit of like an underdog when I start things. Mm. And then as soon as I get into my flow and start playing my game, Mm. then I become like one of the best of where I am at or I do really well at where I'm at. So it's just, I always have to work. We always say like, like the Davidsons, like my family, like we always have to work to get to where we want to go. Like it's an inevitable thing that we have to go through. Um, But I think that the best version of myself always comes out on top in the end. So it's, it's a process, but it's worth it for sure. I love that little Joel Embiid in there. Uh, It's always got to mix in some process work uh, here on the athletes podcast. That's what we do. Uh, Tell me about Portugal like I know you're having to deal with extreme heat compared to back over here in North America any other like major changes or like you mentioned the competitive nature that's there in pro sport like anything else that stands out that maybe athletes would be curious to learn um definitely the weather is different like we played a game yesterday and it was just scorching hot um that that definitely can play a role in in things but I think it's it's very different here in Europe compared to my other experiences. I feel like uh, in the US and Canada, I could get by just being like an athletic person. Um, Mm. Like I'm strong, fast, kick me the ball, I'll get to it. It, But there wasn't, I was missing something and, and I've been really able to work on like my technique and technical abilities here, which is more like European soccer is keeping the ball, not just like kicking it long kind of thing. Our team likes to really play like football that say they always say football but yeah so I think I've been able to work on my technique here and it's really just made, made me a better player in the long run interesting very cool that's good that's good to know have you uh watched the show Ted Lasso my my goal is to be like Ted man if I can be half that positive entertaining individual uh that's my goal he's uh he's the best we binge watched it as well uh, great series highly recommend everyone watches it what was your favorite part Oh God, I don't know. I watched it a few months ago. I just, I just loved him. Like I love him as a person and as that character. It was just so funny. Like there's not a lot of shows where I'm like dying of laughter, just staring at it. And that one, like there was so many moments that were so funny. Yeah. Shout out to Jason Sudeikis for uh, putting on quite the performance and being the positive individual that people needed during COVID. I feel like, you know, I feel like that was a good little mix up and he's just got so many good leadership qualities. I just love it. Huge fan. I know you've also won a couple championships over in Portugal. You want to share what that feels like? I know it's probably no big deal. You're three time MVP with Burlington. So you're used to just winning stuff, but like, you know, what was it like winning some incredible championships overseas in Portugal, like for a nation, basically. Yeah, it it was crazy. Um, So when I first came here, I played on a team called Torrents. And that was kind of just how I said it was COVID year. I kind of wanted to grab at the Portugal opportunity. So I played for that team. um, And that got me to sporting. So it was like a ladder. I had to go there to get here. Um, And sporting's like one of the best in the league. They I was like ready to win things with them. And I was so excited. I came here last July. So this is my second season with them. And we won two cups last year. And I think there was like 15,000 fans at our game and in the end of May there. And um, it was just like surreal. Like there's so many 
a, a different thing here is like the support you get, especially mm-hmm. at this club for European soccer. Like the sporting fans are just insanely crazy and they really support us, especially as women athletes. And it's just amazing to see. And there's like a few photos on my Instagram of like the crowd and, and we walked up the whole crowd to like receive the trophy and everyone's putting their arms out to like congratulate you. It was really cool. It was awesome. Yeah, I, I can only imagine what 15,000 fans would feel like cheering you on. You know, speaking of women's sport being featured, big news as far as like the U.S. women's team signing equal pay between the men's and women's national teams. That's huge. That's like what a milestone. Yeah, it's a huge milestone for them. And I think like even Canada soccer, the men's, they postponed or canceled their game to show like support for the women's team getting equal play as well. So uh, it's awesome. Like the men's team's coming over and trying to help out the women's teams and everything. Yeah, Yeah, that's, that's huge. That is like groundbreaking information. It's like that for something to happen of that size and it, I, I know it's a long time coming, but man, like that's, that's progress. And that's something that should definitely be highlighted. Any advice for players looking to play in Europe coming over from North America? I know it can be a very daunting task to your point, leaving the nest, but like any specific pieces of advice or people that you would maybe tell people to get in touch with so that they can make that process easier. I would definitely just say that you need to find a good agent who has like good connections and everything. Um, I went through to get to my first team with a different agent that I have now. And it got me there. It got me to where I am now. But the agent I currently have like gives me support. He talks with me. We get lunch sometimes. Like we have a close relationship. So it's finding someone who you really do trust and you have good feelings about and a a lot of agents like you're just a number to them so it's Mm -hmm. like about creating that strong relationship where you know that they care about you and they're going to put you in the best situation possible yeah so so crucial and not something everyone is given the opportunity or the same opportunity and i think uh, good for you for finding an agent that's good and maybe uh you know we'll, we'll include him in the show notes so that he gets some extra views and maybe some additional players looking at it um do you have to learn spanish going across there yeah like portuguese and spanish is very similar but i'm taking portuguese classes right now so i can speak a little bit um my teammates always make fun of me so then i get nervous and i stop talking i can get by if i go in like a restaurant or something just on the street i can get by definitely when my parents came they were and my family they were so impressed with like me, if it's flight or fight, you know, like situation, yeah. do it. Um, my club dominantly speaks English. So sometimes like I do that because it's a lot easier, but I'm learning. I, me and my American roommate are trying like to hold each other accountable to do our app every day. And yeah. Duolingo? Not Duolingo. I started with Duolingo. It's okay. Popular. It's really good app. It's like 30 minutes a day. Duolingo like just wasn't wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Duolingo wasn't doing it. That's the alliteration we're going with. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because you know it's not something that you really think of growing up as an athlete. You're like, oh, I need to be able to speak multiple languages, providing I have to play wherever. But for you, it's like, yo, I can't even order a coffee unless I learn this stuff. Like, any fun moments or exchanges in those restaurants where you ended up ordering something incorrectly? <laughs> there's so many and I think like I just get by I mean the previous team I was on before sporting was in a small town the Torian's mm. team um so nobody spoke English there like it was it was super difficult and I didn't really have a lot of English speaking teammates either so that experience was just like I grew so much as a person and like became very independent because I had to like force myself but yeah just I think I only get by People just laugh at me because I'm just a blonde girl, like strolling <laughs> Portugal streets and, and they just laugh at me and it's fine. Um, I get less laughs now because I know what I'm trying to say most of, most of the time. But when I first got here, I was so confused. I just would have to type it in a translator app and like hold it up to them and they'd be like, okay, like, they're, they're really nice here, but because they know that I'm obviously foreign, but 
there's been so many times like that. I can only imagine. What's the what's the travel like compared to NCAA versus now pro sport? Are you guys flying to games? Are you team busing it? Were you team busing down in Indiana? What was that like? Um, team busing for both. Here we only play teams in Portugal. So there's some like on the north side by Porto. Um, and we have to take a bus there. And then there's some in around the Lisbon area, the south side. Um in Indiana, it was similar. I know for uh, like the Big Ten, because the conference is Big Ten. So the Big Ten tournament, we had like a charter flight. Nice. No big deal. Yeah, that was cool. But for to do that here, we have to uh, be in Champions League. So you have to win your league. So hopefully this year will be the year that we do that. I'm manifesting that. So. I love that. What we're manifesting being over there and watching you do it. We'll we'll watch you compete in the Champions League. That'll be fun. Uh, you know, when if you got friends in Portugal, you got to go visit, right? Uh, what where is your favorite part? Maybe of Portugal, maybe of Europe that you've been able to see because of this sport. My roommate and I have traveled in the past six months to France, Spain, uh, Porto, which is like four hours away in Portugal. And I, I never thought I'd go to Paris. It was so cool being there. I, I would definitely say Paris was my favorite just because mm. I've always wanted to go there. I've always wanted to try those macaroons there. <laughs> like a charcuterie board staring at the Eiffel Tower. I thought that was just in like <laughs> movies, but we did that and it was really fun. So yeah, I would definitely say Paris, but there's been like so many beautiful places that we've gone. Okay, good to know. Good to know. We'll definitely have to make an appearance over across the pond. Um, would you ever want to play back in the States if the opportunity presented itself? Um, like professionally in the NWSL? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure I would. Um, I think the hardest part for me here is being far away from my family. Um, mm -hmm. So being on the same time zone as them would be great. And maybe someday in the future I could go back there. I know like they are talking about opening like a Toronto team for the NWSL, which would be like huge. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that, but <laughs> definitely where I'm supposed to be right now, but in the future I could see that for sure. How incredible would it be to play in front of 15, 20,000 people in your home province? Oh, that would be so cool. I would love that. Uh, yeah. Well, we're manifesting that too. Doing a lot of it on this episode. I love it. Uh, I'm curious if you have any stories from your four years in the NCAA, good or bad, that you want to highlight. One of the things I try and do with the Athletes Podcast is showcase the pros and cons to professional sport. Um, a lot of people think and assume that it's just rainbows and daisies and sunshine 24-7, 365. But you know, that might not be the case for everyone. So maybe some lowlights and highlights that you want to share anything in particular stand out? Um, definitely. Like when I first came to this team and this can happen anywhere in college professionally, um, nobody like the coaches didn't know what I could do. Like I hadn't played with the team yet and I got injured like two weeks mm -hmm. in. So I missed and then I got re-injured. So it was like a two and a half month injury and that just sucks so much and my mental health just like declined a lot so I think I grew a lot from that experience and and now I know ways of like how to boost your mental health and there's things that I do to try to keep it like in track on track but I, I would say like the lowest point could be when you're in have like injuries and things that you just like can't control because then you have to build yourself up and it's a long process and it's something that like no one other than an ath another athlete can know what you're going through in that moment kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then after that, like there are, since then there's been so many highs as well, but it's like a constant like wave, like game by game. It's like, are you playing well? Are you scoring? Are you assisting? Are you getting the stats? Are you like playing well with your team? Are you starting? Like it's, it's a huge mental game for sure mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just like controlling what you can control I've learned that that's all you can do and just like trying to stay level-headed for sure yeah I I love the control what you can control and now it's just 
accurate in every aspect of life. And you punched 13 goals in 75 appearances with Indiana. So no big deal from someone who, you know, I'm sure growing up was probably just like, hey, the fact that you even were playing at that level and now professional, you were grateful for. And to think that you actually ended up being captain in your fourth year, like that's incredible. I, uh, I'm i curious if you have anyone who you looked up to or tried to emulate your game as you were growing up, anyone in particular that stood out that you were like, oh, I want to be her or him. Um, always it's been like Christine Sinclair for women's soccer. Like I just love everything that she's done for the game on and off the field. I think she's just like a great person and you can see that by all that she does. And she's one of those people that's trying to like open that Toronto team. So there's more opportunity because in that American league, it's very like American based. They only have Mm -hmm. like a international spots. Um, and to be on those teams, you have to be on your national team on the current roster. So it's a bit difficult to play, um, on those teams. So I just love that she's trying to open up the game to Canadians. It's like a constant problem where like people have to choose after college. There's so many talented Canadian players and they have to choose, okay, do I want to like jump across the pond, do this whole difficult thing away from my family, or do I want to just stop playing? And like a lot of them just stop. I know a lot of people who just are really talented and they just stopped because they couldn't do what I was doing, like what I made the jump to do. So I definitely say her. I think she raises awareness about all that. Men's, there's, I mean, I have to say like Cristiano Ronaldo because I'm in Portugal. He jumped on that bandwagon here, but I think he's great. Um And I always say Jamie Vardy, too, who's like Mm. a great player, is one of my favorites. So I have a lot, but I would highlight those ones as like, yeah, they're great players. Okay, okay. I almost I almost thought you were going to say Jamie Tart there for a second. So (laughs) I was trying to think of what that name was when you asked me about that show. And I was like, what was his name again? Yeah, Yeah, Jamie Tart. Yeah, him and Roy. I'm. Not, I think I'm more of a, on the Roy side than the Jamie Tart side. But you know, we're uh, we're working on getting that that balance that's important in athletics. Um, Chandra, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, sharing your insights, knowledge, wisdom. Um, the way we wrap up every episode is we ask what our biggest piece of advice for the next generation of athletes would be from our guest, and I'd love for you to share that. And then I have a follow-up question out extra as well as a little bonus, but. Okay. Um, I would just say if the sport you're playing, what you're doing in any area of life is something you love and like you think that you could be great at it, then keep going. Don't care what other people say. I've had coaches at every level tell me like, I'm not going to be able to accomplish something and then I do it. So just keep going, trust yourself trust your close circle and and keep moving forward with it love that who was that most influential coach for you 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 dropped it there i'm curious um there's been well there's been lots of coaches that not lots there's been some that have told me like you're not gonna you can't do that and i'm like okay well watch me do it I, i you can't tell me that I honestly couldn't tell you like one specific coach that really like helped me a lot in that sense. Like they all serve their purpose. I would honestly say like my family has been like, especially my Mm -hmm. mom, the one who's like always encouraged me to move forward, move forward, move forward. The coaching staff I have now are great and and they've really helped me a lot. But in the past, um, like youth coaches have helped, but there's not like that one specific one that's like this person helped me. I've, I've done it myself, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that just goes to show you that like only you will look out for yourself in this world. So like, you just got to keep trusting yourself and do what you got to do. So. Oh, so good. It's awesome. A forward from sporting Portugal, Chandra Davidson. Thank you so much. Yo, where can people find you on social media so that they can continue to learn how to keep being themselves? Um, just on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. One of those, mainly Instagram, Chandra Davidson. Chandra, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate your time. Hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck the rest of the season. We'll see you in Champions League. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.